station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, this is Teshin. I'm ready for the event. Isa, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Jules here from Isa in Isaac Turin. How do you hear me? Buongiorno, I read you loud and clear. How do you read me? I give you the word, I give down the word to Fabrizio Tutti of the Agenzia Spaziale Italiana. Buongiorno, signor Di. When you left for the International Space Station, I wanted to ask you, after the first two months of activities, a first set of uh, impressions, of emotions, of activities that you have performed, Director, good day. Welcome on board the uh, space station here. We are in the Columbus module. And I thank you for the question, which allows me to expound upon the activities that we perform on the space station. The first two months were very, very intense, possibly the most intense months of the whole mission, because we had a series of activities that are nominal, of maintenance and science on board the station, but also some events that were pretty particular, like the arrival of the uh, ATV spacecraft and the two extravehicular activities. From a personal standpoint of emotions, I really feel like I'm living a dream that is not ending when I wake up in the morning, but instead it continues. It's wonderful to be here on board with the idea of doing something valuable, like the science that we perform on station. It has immediate effects on the Earth. The uh, bleeding edge technology that we test here on station is used on Earth and also for the future exploration. From a standpoint of uh, specific events, I'm very happy that the uh, ATV worked perfectly. It uh, docked perfectly and brought on board many things that we are in need of. So for me, the first two months definitely positive, and I hope that the mission will only keep getting better in this sense. Another question, Luca, about, about the EVA that you conducted, the two EVAs that you conducted. What are your emotions? What, what was left in you? And for the ATV also, what, what emotions did you feel about being in the void of space? Look, I would love to have a vocabulary that would allow me to express fully the sensations that I felt when I went out for the first time in, in the void of vacuum, protected only by the uh, spacesuit. Unfortunately, I'm neither a poet nor an intellectual. I, I really am at a loss for words to express it. It's something that is truly changing you from the inside when you see our world from above with its colors. It's an explosion of colors separated only from the visor of the helmet. It's a wonderful feeling of being born again. I, I talk about an explosion of colors because while I was on the uh, robotic arm and when I saw Dawn for the first time in space from outside, Dawn arrives in a very little bit of time from from darkness, which is a complete absence of color. Everything is swallowed by this explosion of colors that are beautiful. I was over Africa, so all reds, yellows, and 
and, and all these colors filled my eyes. This is something that I will always bring with me. No one will ever be able to, to erase it. Even the events of the second EVA, they won't be able to dampen the, uh, the desire to do that again and to complete the work that I've started that unfortunately I wasn't able to complete. Fortunately, the first EVA went really well, very quickly, so we were able to accomplish all our goals, which were to complete the installation of the RGBs that are large bars that are used to move the radiators in case of issues. So we brought them to their final installation point and then we brought back some experiments that were outside for a certain amount of time that will be brought back on the ground to analyze the effects of vacuum and space temperatures on certain materials and then we also took a broken video camera that is inside here with us inside the station and we also started the uh, connection of a series of cables that we would have had to complete during the second EVA. A big hug from all of us here on station. We are following you from here and break a leg. Thank you. And uh, I also thank all the ground personnel for the extraordinary support that I constantly feel. Hi, Luca. We met in Rome and we spoke a few times. I wanted to ask you. The space station is one of the few satellites that we're able to repair. You talked about EVA repairs. What difference did you find between repairing the pump down on Earth and up there on station. This is also a great question. For me, on station, it was a little bit more complex because I didn't have the support of the instructors that are always very attentive to these things and, and you don't have that security blanket of somebody knowing a little more than you, plus the surprises that are inevitable in the space environment. But there is something that I brought here as a surprise that helped me a lot in repairing the pump. This came with the ATV. Unfortunately, I didn't have time to set it all up when I repaired the pump, but this is our brand new toolbox, which is really extraordinary. It's a little masterpiece of, of organization that I would love to have in my garage, something like this. It's truly extraordinary. I hope to be able to use it as much as possible as long as I'm here on board the station. As far as the pump goes, I'm happy that the work went well and the ground support was uh, indispensable to to resolve the pro problems that present them themselves. And I'm happy that Columbus is once again ready for any event. Luca, naturally. All of us at ESA were with you. We followed the uh, mission with great interest. We were close to you while you were having trouble with the EVA. We're very happy that everything's going well. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Altec from Thales Selenia Space. In, in Rome, we talk with all our colleagues. Unfortunately, in this room today, it's only a subset of them because there are hundreds of people that have worked for the space station in the past two years. So 
Obviously, what you're doing for us is the realization for us. Seeing that you are doing things that we have been trying to do, so you represent all of us. I wanted to ask you a question. Aside from the uh, space station modules that are there permanently, there are also some that come and go, like the ATV, the dock, and the others, like Cygnus, that in September will arrive and then others will arrive. How do you manage and how do you live this traffic on space station up there? This is a new question that I've never heard before, and I'm happy that I'm able to tell you that here on board, we're all, always very happy when, when a new spacecraft arrives, whether it's Progress, whether it's ATV or Cygnus. Surely for Cygnus, it'll be special because it's the first time and whenever something new arrives, it's a little bit more fun. So we're happy because it's a new challenge. It's a new moment. It's a new variation to the daily plan that we uh, face every day. And also because we, new things arrive, new opportunities to install new experiments, and possibly new maintenance materials to repair and maintain preventative, and then we have some surprises, like special foods and something new. So for us, this traffic is definitely not a nuisance, but actually something exciting that we like. And also, this is perhaps a detail that is not easy to comprehend, but being able to see a spacecraft arriving near the station is, is very cool. To be able to see a little dot that little by little becomes a spacecraft craft in all its perfection that has traveled for millions of kilometers that arrives and docks with the station with extraordinary precision. It, it's really a, an, a, a sensation of accomplishment that honors our engineers and all those who work on the space programs. Thank you, Luca. Enjoy your work from Torino and Altec. Thank you, all the uh, men of Thalassalania, and thanks to all those in Turin for their hospitalities they've demonstrated in the past. I'm going to pass the microphone to the president of the Piedmont region, since we're in region. Good day, Luca. This is Roberto Cotta. First of all, I'm very happy to be able to speak with you on behalf of all the people of Piedmont. They told me that you have attended The Umberto Nazionale. Not as a student, unfortunately. It seemed like a wonderful place. I was there as a guest, speaking with the students. Something that will always stay in my memories as a symbol of, of Italy at work, because it's a great, wonderful reality. It's, it's a healthy and living environment. Perfect. Thank you. So this is a renewal of an invitation to the region when you will come back from this experience. I wanted to ask you a question that maybe a lot of people ask you. The experiments that you perform, what type of impact can they have on our life in the future? If you could give us an example of research that was done in the past in space and that then had an impact versus new research, new scientific findings, or research that you're performing today. 
La ringrazio della domanda. Thank you for the question. Because actually, perhaps we talk too little about the exceptional impact that the International Space Station science has on Earth. First of all, it's, it's a reason for Italy to boast here on station. We will start an experiment coming from Italy called ICE. ICE. It's an experiment about combustion di combustibili di origine biologica of biological fuels which tends to minimize the poisonous emissions so it's it's an experiment of green air which tends to unify business and environment for having fuels that are renewable and that don't pollute so impacts on economy and ecology other experiments that will have impact briefly spinal ultrasound one is called spinal ultrasound so we, we do some echocardiograms on the spine so using a machine no bigger than a laptop we can diagnose problems with the spine something that right now is only possible with very complex machines like MRIs and scanners so in places that are hard to access, being able to bring these large machines is impossible. So throughout this research that we're conducting on board, we'll be able to diagnose even in very remote areas. So again, an immediate impact. And these are just a couple of examples of what we do on board. We're also working on a diet that is hopefully able to minimize the uh, calcium loss. We uh, on orbit have uh, rapid osteoporosis due to the lack of gravity. If we're able to establish a link between what we're eating and bone loss, we're able to transfer this down to Earth and we should be able to help millions of people on Earth suffering from osteoporosis. These are examples of science that we're conducting on board. The experiments are hundreds that we're conducting on board for all, all year round throughout the entire time that the station is up. What do you miss about Earth? No, le, le domande non sono mai scontate. Eh, spero che non questions are, are never tried. Eh, I hope the bimbe, questions are, padre, aren't either. I miss my daughters. I'm a father of anni, two eh, girls, three and six. I see them once a week. So not being able to eh, hug them veramente, veramente is truly hard. Eh, è forse so la parte, this is a part più, eh, più di Poi, that is eh, most forse forse melancholy. Normale, ecco, Something a little more normal. I miss a nice espresso, the way they can only make in Italy. So here on board, we still don't have the technology that allows us to have a good coffee. And finally, I am from Sicily. So for me, summer has always been tied to the idea of, of the beach and the breeze out at sea. So this environment that has no smells and is a little bit sterile is something that I miss but I'm, I'm happy to be here and I wouldn't change I wouldn't change a thing I wouldn't trade the work that I'm doing for anything else I'd say that these are great answers thank you congratulations and a big hug, hug from all of us And station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. Houston station, thank you very much. And thank you, ESA and participants. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.